I think when we asked the question of what Matt Eberflus's career was as a Chicago Bears head coach, or if we wanted to just sum up the 2023 season in general, me personally, I'm just going to point to this game. First of all, I wasn't I wasn't as surprised or disappointed as I think you were. I think your reaction to that was a lot more natural, whereas mine has become a little bit more pessimistic in this way. Where I I I, I want them. I wanted them to win. I had no, I had no desire for them to lose that game. But you knew that Detroit was needed the two drives to get there. And I think I texted you exactly at that moment. Like I think something's brewing here. Like I think something's going on here. And so you kind of like, I think f- first thought I had overall is, I'm not a big believer in this, and I know neither of us is, but uh, that that losing culture and that losing mentality versus a winning culture and a winning mentality. And I don't think it, it boils down to something as simple as like, oh, well, you know, Mitch Trubisky knew how to win because he won 10 games his first year, right? And I don't think it's that. I think it's just more of like a team that knows how to support each other and like lift each other up when one part of the team is slacking. The Bears are still in the, in the phase of team building where every part needs to go right. Right. Like if Cairo Santos misses any one of his like three or four field goals, we're screwed. If Justin Fields plays any worse than he does and has like one extra turnover, we're screwed. If the defense doesn't get three turnovers, it's not even close. We probably lose that game by 10 points. So everything needed to go right just to win that game. I just don't like the the regime and the tenure of this coaching staff at this point where I think they just like breed a culture of losing. I'm past the point of looking into this year. I I have to look forward already because that, like you said, was I think that was the like pin or the you know the little grain of sand that topples everything over. Like this, I'm blown away that he still has a job. It, I think it it's a, I think it's insulting that he still has a job. It was a ten pound so, weight. It's not a grain of sand. Yeah, that was no, I get that was that was the uh, man. Yeah, somebody said the straw that broke the camel's back. I go, no, that's not a straw. That's a whole hay bale right there. Collapsed. Let's listen to this. Let's listen to this guy. Should I have called this? Should I have called that? Should I be more aggressive here, um, less aggressive there? You know, it's it's like when you have the end of the half at the New Orleans game, New Orleans game, right? They went, you know, I think it was three and out or maybe four and out. That was that was good execution by the players. It was a good call by the by the whoever this coordinator was, and that was that would be me. Did you, did you hear that? Hold on. Let me just replay that really quickly. Let me just replay. It's a good call by the by the whoever this coordinator was. And that was that would be me. And then- you stood up there all year and pointed a finger at the players on the execution. In the beginning of the year, I, I was with that. I was saying yes, the players need to execute better. There's there's more to that. There's another ten seconds of him going. Well, you know, when you when you win. Play calling's good and execution's good. And when you lose, play calling's bad and execution's bad. Did, you're just learning this now? Seems like this guy uh, is happier about having a good week of practice than the result of a, a game. And then to, to sit there and credit yourself like that. I mean, to whoever that coordinator was, by the way, that would be me. You, you got to be kidding yeah. me. When I, my jaw dropped, like, dude, you need to go. If you think that any of these players are going to play as hard as they did for you this last week after that coaching collapse at the end of that game, you're not going to get that kind of performance again all season from them. You're just not. Um, I think that's the type of game that turns players like the way that we are, you know, where we're just, I think the players even hit a certain point where there's like, let's just go out there and not get hurt. Like let's play some football, do our jobs. Right. But when you get, when you get guys that are just doing their job, it's, that's not high level football. High level football is when you see guys just completely it's a second and 3 in the middle of the second quarter and a guy is just like running full head of steam like his life depends on it. You you can't get that out of these players with this coaching staff anymore. And this was my concern with this coaching staff hire from the very beginning is it it's a lot of rah rah stuff in the sense that accountability, you know, uh, this and that uh hits principles and when none of that goes right, there's really nowhere to turn. But when you are a cold, hard facts kind of coach, right? Mike Tomlin, Bill Belichick, and you say guys just didn't get it done. It leaves a lot more 
room for error in every single facet of the game. So like the players don't take as much blame. You don't have to answer as many questions. But when you come out there and you're just all excited and you're ready to talk about your philosophies and your principles, everybody knows what they are because you've over explained them. And now everybody's questioning what, are, so what is not working? You've explained it all to us, but it doesn't work. So what doesn't work? Where do you turn? I don't know. If last year was year 1.0 and this year was year 2.0, it's we're at 1.25. The the progress of where you wanted this team to grow over the course of an off season in one year has been dramatically slower. And you can attribute that to a lot of things, right? Like young players, young rookies, like maybe this is a project that needed a lot more time than fans gave it credit for. But regardless of how this goes, like I don't think Matt Eberflus is the guy to take you long term unless he is your scapegoat that you fully plan on firing regardless of, you know, whether it's now or never, because then you'd bring in the next guy who may be a good head coach and he has a five win season. Then you've wasted, you know, another five win season on a good coach, just like demoralized him and this and that. But I think it's, I think we've moved past Matt Eberflus. He almost doesn't deserve this much consideration of like the, the nuances of what's wrong with him. He's just a bad head coach and his team's bad. The one thing that truly bothered me is you get Montez Sweat. He's having a career year. You paid him $100 million. And in a game where your offense holds onto the ball for 40 minutes and your defense is only out there for 20 minutes, Montez Sweat only sees 63% of the snaps. Why? In a game where you only have to go out in the field for 20 minutes? Yeah, he didn't yeah. need a rest. He did, correct. And, and so there were a lot of short, you know, three, four play drives and so in the last four or five minutes of the game, why are you not putting your best players in position to make a play for you? Listen, Hutchinson did not do anything all game. But you know what he did at the end of the game? Sealed it. Yeah. 30 seconds left, just goes and smacks the ball right out of Fields' hands. You know, he seals it, just seals the win. I thought Fields played a really good game. Uh, statistically, it's whatever. It's more of the same. However, the eye test will show you he had pretty good command and control of that offense, and he was moving the chains. The only, only, and I'm nitpicking at this point, the only scrutiny I have, I'll tell you why I'm nitpicking, too, is the, is the play, the bomb to Tyler Scott, where everybody's blaming Tyler Scott for slowing down. Um, you had DJ Moore running a crossing route across the middle of the field, and he was open. He was NFL open, and all you need is a first down. You don't need a big play. However, that that safety does bite in on DJ Moore. It, he just doesn't come and cover him like he should. So, you know, when you're looking at it, you make the right read because the safety comes in. And in that, at that point in time, you take the deep shot, but that's what separates, you know, the good and the great, like you just got to see it. And, and then at the end of the day, I feel like, DJ Moore is your best player on offense. Yeah. What wide receiver does not want the ball at the end of the game? You know, I really like the way the Patriots ran over the years. When a guy fumbled the ball, he's not seeing the field for the rest of the game. You don't sit there and try and give him like a redemption. And that's what I feel like this team keeps doing with Vilas Jones with Chase Claypool. It's, it's constantly like these guys go out there and fail you. And so you go, okay, okay, well, we're going to put you in position to make up for that failure. And then they just fail again. To address the nitpicky thing about the check down to DJ Moore, the crossing route to DJ Moore, the, the DJ Moore route is open, NFL open, but you are relying on DJ Moore to make a play, make a guy miss, and pick up the first down. Because if he doesn't make that guy miss, he's definitely short of the first down anyway. Yeah, In terms but do of, you remember that play earlier when he just kind of dumps it off to him? And no, I agree. And guy wrapped around his ankle and he shrugs him off and sits there. And, it's you it's know, not about – It's DJ Moore. No, I agree. It's not about like – to me it's not uh, – if we're talking like issues of do you need to get DJ more the ball more? Yeah, for sure. Like in terms of like in that situation, did Fields make the wrong call? I don't think so. He probably, if, if that's a slightly better or more talented receiver, is that not like a game ceiling play? So you're relying on Tyler Scott. The read was correct. The play was correct. The, yep. the route was correct. Tyler Scott slowed down on his route. We all saw it. And in the moment I thought, why is he slowing down? And then he was a foot short of the ball. So there's a lot of issues with minor plays like that, but in terms of overall reviewing fields, like that game is 
to me, indicative of like why I want Fields moving forward. He probably wants to be here less at this point than we would like him to be here. And I don't blame the guy, but I don't, I don't like looking at one play and just being like, you know, hey, if he made that right read, the game's over. It's asking Justin Fields to be clutch in a situation where he's up 10 points with four minutes left. Like that's well, kind of a silly thing. Like to me, it's Matt Eberflus. This is your defense. Get them to get one stop at any point. At any point, there's 20 plays, 25 plays the Lions had to run successfully to win that game perfectly within four minutes, and you couldn't get one proper stop. Like that's that's not a Justin Fields needs to be clutch and hit the right read to DJ Moore just so he gets the first down and ice the game. Like that's not being clutch. That's just now you're hoping for a miracle from Justin Fields to bail you out because he didn't need to – like they shouldn't have needed to be bailed out at that point. Well, that's why I said I, I it's not much criticism on Fields at all. Yeah. My, to be honest with you, it yeah, there's plenty of plays you could point to throughout the game. Um, I just feel like that if I look at the whole game from him, that's the only one thing that I say, hey, man, I wish he would have done that a little bit differently. And like I said, it separates the good from the great. And I – but it's unreal. It's an unrealistic expectation to expect him to be perfect. I saw this game as like a Justin Fields screw it game. I'm just going to go out and ball out and like hope that the NFL understands that I'm an NFL player. I think that list keeps getting smaller and smaller of starting NFL QBs that are capable. And I think Justin Fields just keeps moving up the list of guys you'd rather have over another guy. I really do. Because even guys going into the season that we thought were debatable, you know, Deshaun Watson or... Mac Jones or uh, Aaron Rodgers, like those guys are getting hurt. Those guys can't finish games. I think there's the list of teams that would prefer to have Justin Fields over their guy keeps growing and growing. The amount of draft capital you have to spend to replace Justin Fields and make it palatable, right? The first pick overall or the fourth pick overall or whatever you have to do, it's just not worth it. So I saw more from Justin Fields that game that makes me dead set on like what a damn shame we've ruined this elite prospect than I probably ever have before. It it was a very depressing, sombering game for me in that way. You know, it's funny watching the Eagles and Chiefs game yesterday. I saw Jalen Hurts take off and try and scramble, pick up a first down. He got tackled short. I'm just sitting there going, I I just know Fields would have made that. Mm -hmm. I just know Fields would have made that run. I've seen him make it. And he's just a little bit faster and whatever. And, you know, Jalen Hurts is considered a running quarterback. But when you look at his rushes, they're all short yardage rushes. Even last year, they were all, you know, 15 yards and under. So we're talking about red zone rushes into the end zone. Not, you know, 50 plus yard rushing plays. That's something that Fields can do that many other guys in this league can't. And it's just, it's incredible to me to see how much, a team makes a difference. You know, Jalen Hurts has just such a complete team around him. Mm-hmm. There is no reason you should not keep Fields around. None. None. He, I think he has shown you everything that he's totally capable of playing in this league. He's capable of making every throw. I mean, this is now uh, – a, it's not even a team talent issue anymore because I feel like you've gotten way more talented than you did last year, and yet you're looking at the same amount of wins. You know what I mean? Yeah. potentially, or maybe a win or two more. Uh, this is clearly a mismanagement of players at this point. So That's not how good NFL teams function. There's always a, you know, a give and take, something to it, where the Eagles are a ball control team with the occasional big play, right? The, the Chiefs are, hey, we're a shootout team, so all you need to do is get us a turnover, right? Bend but don't break, and then make an occasional special play from these guys. The Bears have absolutely zero cohesiveness. This is a 4-3 team that's supposed to be bend but don't break, but constantly break. And then it's a team that you're supposed to give the offense an early lead or you know you don't have to play from behind, and they're constantly playing from behind. There's It makes no sense. There's no cohesion between offense and defense. And I think we're going to look back on this year and the absolute retrospect dumpster fire that it was. This season so far is much worse than last year. In terms of, oh, I hate this team so much worse. It's so much worse than it was last year. In the sense of, it's not a worse talented team, but this season is way more disappointing and way more depressing than last season was. 
I think the NFL has shown you that you're in a much better situation overall to take the first and the fourth if you get them this year, turn it into the next three years worth of first round picks and just keep taking left tackles and keep taking cornerbacks and keep keep taking defensive ends and rush linebackers and just keep doing that until your team is just an absolute solid monster unit. Like when we do a, a Minnesota prediction, I I very much could see how the Bears win this game. Is it likely? Probably not, because I'm going to default to the coaching staff failing, the defense failing. But it wouldn't surprise me or it wouldn't shock me. So if you are ready to make that move, and I and if you are ready to start going to the next coaching staff, I do not want a developmental coaching staff. That's the last thing I want at this point. This is where I get scared about keeping Matt Eberflus, but at the same time, like if this is the... If we have seven weeks of football, it's a lot of time. And this is the second half of the year. You got Javon Dexter playing better. You got your rookies playing better. You got your defense gelling. Justin Fields is on a mission. I think you have some really scary potential wins in here. I think that there's going to be three to four more wins in the last seven games. That's how bold I am about how steady I think this team is growing. And if they do win three to four more games, then you do have to debate, like, does Matt Eberflus? There's a lot of opinions I have that don't necessarily agree with what I think is going to happen. And that's not being contradictory. That's just being a little bit more nebulous, you know? This is where the nuance of, like, when people crap on us in comments and everything, like, you can't have this opinion while having this opinion. Both can be true. Sorry to break it to you. Um, I think there's a lot wrong with the coaching staff and a lot wrong with the team. But a team can play hard for each other and a team can play hard for its coaches and all that stuff. They're definitely not playing hard for the coaches anymore. But these are young players that they're not ready to quit their NFL career right now. Like there's a few players on this team that definitely want to leave. Probably Justin Fields, definitely Jalen Johnson, most likely Darnell Mooney. And that's like that that is what it is. But right now, all I've seen is really consistent defensive play and a lot of strong, like four, three traditional stuff, like. Don't give up big plays, make defenses beat you. And right now you have Josh Dobbs, potentially Justin Jefferson, and a Vikings defense that is not very good. So I wouldn't be surprised in like a 30 to 17 Bears win. I think that the Vikings are just really bad right now and the Bears are getting better.